Greetings. The Lord is with you. Good to be with you again this evening. And uh, let's begin as we make the sign of the cross. And we say together, we are under the care of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I think uh, some of you are going to be seeing this in a little bit, or some of you tell me you watch it in the morning. But I'd like to, uh, uh, and I'll, I'll say this again at the end, I'd like to ask for your input. So I'll be looking for some responses that people make uh, to this page. Uh, this has been pretty much uh, the opposite of what I viewed discipleship being or disciple making, which is my role that Jesus gave every Christian is to go and make disciples. And disciples isn't just uh, preaching one way. That's what Jesus did uh, when he preached to well thousands of people, not never me, but Jesus preaching to thousands of people and they'd go their way. But he spent his time interacting with disciples and that was his path. On, on Easter evening, he met with those disciples. On the day of Pentecost, there was 120 and the church started with that small group of people. We're uh, um, doing a, a, a one-way communication like a sermon uh, or a sermonette, uh, a devotional every day is, is great. Uh, I think we were a little better off during Lent when we had that booklet we were using. And so I'm planning in the days to come, uh, in, in the month of May, doing things differently. Uh, we may do it differently again in June, but beginning tomorrow, we're going to be taking the scripture readings for Sunday. And so on Friday and Saturday, we'll be looking at texts that we'll be looking at on Sunday. Um, and then next week, we're going to be looking at, at um, um, Monday through Saturday, scriptures that we're going to be having on Friday, excuse me, on Sunday, uh, and, and looking at them, but not so much to look at how we can learn. Uh, this, this whole process of discipleship is always about obedience. It's hearing God speak to us, directing our lives, and then putting it into practice, obeying. We have it in this gospel lesson that we have today, excuse me, well, this Sunday from John 10, where Jesus says, the sheep hear his voice, the voice of the shepherd. This Sunday is Good Shepherd Sunday. The voice hear, the, the sheep hear the voice of the shepherd and he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. When he has brought them all out, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for the sheep know his voice. The sheep know the voice. They know what it is that God is speaking to them through the word or in some other way, always attached to the word. They know when God is speaking, and they follow. They put it into practice. The path for maturing as a Christian, again, I define discipleship. I think we define it here at Good Hope. Discipleship is the process, is, is being a follower of Jesus who is maturing and multiplying. The process of discipleship is maturing, and maturing only happens as we learn to know the shepherd's voice, and as we hear him speak, we actually put it into practice. Putting it into practice is the old word of obedience, or it's what Jesus says in John 10, it is following Jesus hearing his voice, and following him. So it would be my goal to, to help us learn to listen to his voice and practice it into, into, into practice. And then finally, maturing. Um, if we think about sheep, uh, they learn to hear the shepherd's voice. Uh, they follow the shepherd. And then what do sheep do besides eating and sleeping? Well, they make other sheep which is what we're called to do. Go make disciples. Right? So that's the whole point. Go make disciples. We become disciples. We grow as disciples. We go make disciples. So we, we hear the shepherd. We follow what the shepherd says. And then we teach other people to hear the shepherd and follow what he says. That's the path we're going to be talking about on Sunday. And I wanted to introduce it today, even though our Bible verse for today is in Proverbs. 
I wanted to introduce that because I want to ask you for a favor. I think this one-way dialogue is fine, and I see some people are are uh, saying that that they're with us in this time, and that's great. But I'd like you to respond in the next day or two to tell me, would you like to have a time where we all did this at the same time and that you knew the scriptures ahead of time, which you do. They're posted in our newsletter, which hopefully you got either in uh, mail or electronically. And if not, we'll get it to you. Um, so contact me about that. Um, if you, I, I want to know if you'd like to do this at a regular time. I don't know, like the, the lunch hour or at uh, four o'clock in the afternoon or, or at um, uh, seven o'clock at night. Um, what would be a good time that, that if we did it on Facebook Live, we'd have to let you type in a question or make or, or share a comment, share an insight, and then we could all be blessed by that. And we're giving and taking the communication being a, a bit more two-way. I'd also be willing at some time to start a Zoom Bible study that could be at one time, and we could all be seeing each other and conversing a little bit more easily at that time. So I'd like your input about, is there a time you'd like to do Facebook Live together uh, as a daily devotion? Or is there a time that you would like to, uh, would you be interested in doing a Zoom Bible study? I want to help us on this path. That This is like a key passage on discipleship. The sheep, he, he, he calls his sheep out. He goes before them. The sheep follow him because they know his voice. They know his voice, and they follow. What have you been hearing God saying to you? I had a great conversation I do every week on Thursday with a pastor up in Canada. He's become just a close friend. Um, and uh, we, we are encouraging each other in our discipleship. And, and I uh, had a conversation with him about that I've been so busy just thinking about saying something at these daily devotions that I haven't spent as much time as I used to or usually do hearing God say, Bob, here's a word for you. Not just a word of information, not just something to teach, but here's something I want you to do. Here's where we're going today and I want you to follow me. And then the challenge to obey. I, I hear God often. My pastor friend said he's found the same thing happening as he's doing daily devotions online for his congregation but he said he was doing a, a cemetery at a cemetery doing an internment and and uh, he had a little bible passage to read there uh, and to prepare some thoughts about the individual who had died there, were, there was no funeral in the church only a graveside and uh, it's different up in canada their rules but but he was only allowed to do a graveside and so he had to pick a scripture passage and and in sharing to the family, he heard God clearly speaking to him about something in his life. And it was a powerful word that he shared, a, a word that redirected how he was thinking about what he was doing in ministry. And, and uh, it's so important that we hear those words of Jesus speaking to us out of the word, true to the word, and then put them into practice. So I'd like to make sure that in our time together, we're going to be doing that. To help us do that, we're always going to ask some questions about what this tells us about God, the kinds of things we did during Lent, what this passage says about God, and what it, it's what new insight did I get? What is God saying to me? How can I put that into a prayer? And what is God calling me to do? How is God calling me to respond to that word? Uh, this is again from John 10. Um, and maybe both, uh, maybe a Zoom Bible study once a week, maybe a Facebook Live daily devotional. But what time would be a good time? Uh, I, I, and everybody's going to have to pipe in on this to respond. Even if you're viewing this tomorrow morning on Friday morning, fine. Tell me what's a good time. When do you, because if 70% if of the people think that 9 in the morning works or 1 in the afternoon or 7 o'clock at night works, uh, I don't care. Happen. Um, so our Bible verse for today is uh, from Proverbs chapter 4. It's the last of the promises on uh, healing that we've been listening to. 
And usually Proverbs has a lot of pithy statements that are unrelated. Um, and there may be themes that you can pick verses throughout the Proverbs, but they just go from one thought to another thought, just cascading thoughts of, of spiritual and, and life truths. Well, here, our passage today is from Proverbs 4, 20 through 23. And it's actually a, a little connected uh, section uh, because uh, he uh, is going to talk about how we can apply God's word in our heart, in our speech, in our eyes, in our feet. It goes on for maybe eight verses or so, but I'm just going to stick with the verses that were assigned for this day. 20 through 23. My child, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my saying. Let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. You see, I've already got one response in about maybe 7 o'clock at night would be a good time for most people. I'd like everybody to pipe in what their thoughts are about that. Thanks, Fred, for that thought. And we could, at one time, if we're all together, we could make comments and, and we'd all see them popping up on the screen if that would be helpful for you. But I'm going to go back here while we're looking at this passage. And remember, it started off tonight by me just referring to what we're going to be doing now in the month of May, looking at scriptures that we're going to be focused on on Sunday uh, out of the Old Testament, the Psalm, the New Testament, or the Gospel. And we're going to be uh, just taking more time in a devotional way, not a sermon way, but in a devotional way, trying to hear what God has to say to us in those passages. So let's do that now with Proverbs. Hear his voice. What's the shepherd saying to us? And how does he want us to follow? And of course, it's the shepherd's voice we're listening for. And here in Proverbs chapter 20, it's all about his voice. My son or my, my daughter, my, my child, be attentive to my words. Of course, we have to listen to the word or we, we need to not only hear it, but pay attention to it. My son, my child, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. The voice of the shepherd, when he's speaking, are we in, inclining our ear, leaning in to hear what he has to say, a bit of expectation, a desire to hear. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart. Well, God's word is written down. We, we most clearly hear the voice of God in the written word of God. Uh, this is not, uh, as us as, as Christians, this is not, you know, just uh, the word of Solomon. This is God's word speaking through Solomon. We hear God's voice in the book of Proverbs. We hear God speaking to us throughout the word. And so that's why Solomon says, let these words, let my word not escape from your sight. It's written for us. How do we hear God speak? Well, the shepherd and his voice, the lambs, the sheep, hear the, the shepherd, but we don't hear an audible voice. Not most people, most of the time. But we do know the voice when God speaks to us. And we hear that voice in the reading, in the, in the speaking, in the proclamation of the word. Be attentive to my word. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape from your sight. <laughs> I don't think the word is trying to run away from us. <laughs> Let them not escape. There's more like, if something's going to escape, it's because the guard isn't paying attention. And uh, time in, with God escapes us when we aren't inclining our ear toward him, being attentive toward him. Let my words not escape from your sight. 
Keep them within your heart. Treasure his word. Meditate on his word. And I've been saying uh, a thing I'd heard that if you know how to worry, you know how to meditate. Worry is dwelling on something that that is just consuming your thoughts. You can't even stop thinking about it. <laughs> Meditation is deeply thinking about the word, a word for an extended time. It's not just reading a large portion of scripture, but focusing in and asking questions and thinking about and mulling over, chewing over like a, a cow chewing the cud. Just keep chewing it and letting it get deeper into us. Keep these words in your heart. And then the promise. For my voice, my word, what I have to say to you personally, not intellectually, not to know more things about the Bible, but what I have to say to your, your heart. God says, these words are life to those who find them. In John 10, it, the, the passage we have for Sunday ends with verse 10, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. <laughs> these my words are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. Wow, that'd be a blessing. Life, abundant life. God has more for you than you can ever imagine. I know that those of us who've walked with him for a long time, we know that that's true. We know that it's true even though we go through hardships. That going through hardships with Jesus changes the, the tenor of our, of our life. The tone of what we're going through. And even though, like last Sunday, I can have my pastor, Ken, who uh, I had so many good pastors. I had no perfect pastors. I had pastors with faults, every single one of them. But I had good pastors. And, and Pastor Ken was one of those great pastors that I had. Pastor Ken, I, I shared something he wrote uh, to me. Uh, uh, he messaged me on Instant Messenger last week and how very difficult his time was in the nursing facility, how his health had been bad for so long, in and out of hospitals and nursing homes relentlessly for a couple of years. And it gets overwhelming at times. And he allowed that out. I'm so grateful to have a pastor who can share the depth of pain that he's in. Still a man of faith, but just almost at his rope's end. And uh, he knew Jesus was walking with him. And uh, what a blessing it is to have that kind of a man of faith. Well, his word is life to those who find him. Even in dark, terrible, difficult times, Ken, even in his deepest struggle, knows God is journeying with him. And it, it makes all the difference. And it's healing to all their flesh. Well, that's the hope and that's the prayer that, that God would, would heal him. I do want to ask your special prayers tonight. Um, Fred Schuster came to the evening uh, or to the, the time of communion yesterday, Wednesday evening, 4.30 to 6.30. And in the little sitting that we had of a few people, um, Pastor uh, uh, um, Fred Schuster talked about Dr. Duru, uh, the Nigerian doctor who comes with us on our trip to, to Baja, California uh, in Mexico for uh, um, every few years. And he's part of a clinic, a teaching hospital in a, med in a hospital. He's at a teaching university, teaching medicine and at a at a hospital and in his team of five doctors, three have died and one's on a ventilator. Uh, we need to pray for Dr. Duru, D-U-R-U, D-R, D-U-R-U, uh, Francis Duru and, and uh, ask God to protect him, use him and draw him closer to himself. Uh, I pray that uh, God would give him life and healing and through him, healing to others. Um, so if you have um, if you have some thoughts, again, um, what is God saying to you? Well, God's just 
speaking to me again about this importance, not just for me to hear his word so I can do some kind of TV or uh, video uh, presentation. Um, he didn't call me to do video presentations. He called me to grow as a disciple and listen to his voice and follow him. So what is God asking you to do today? What is God saying you need to do? I know what he's telling me. And, and that's very clear. That as in that conversation I had with my pastor friend, Mac, um, very clear what he's saying to me. Um, I need to make sure this devotion time is a matter of me following my shepherd. And then when that's done, I can focus on teaching something each evening. And so that's going to be my pattern. And we're going to use those questions. What, what does this tell us about God? What does this tell us? Uh, uh, what is God saying to us? What's ca catching our attention? How can I, is he asking me to do something, confess something, thank him for something, pray about something? What's God asking me to do? And then um, uh, put that into a prayer. And then do what we're going to hear about on Sunday and I've been focused on today. He goes before them. He calls his own sheep by name. The sheep follow him for they know his voice. So we hear him speak and we, well, we just start doing it. Uh, and that's going to mature us in our faith and mature our congregation in serving him. Again, I want to thank everyone for joining me. I'll, have, I'll close with a prayer in a moment. But again, um, I, I've had a couple of people share that Gee, 7 o'clock in the evening works. If we wanted to make this a conversation time, I'd have to set it up at generally speaking the same time each day, whether it's 9 in the morning or 1 in the afternoon or 4 in the afternoon or 7 at night. Um, what would seem to work with you, uh, that would be a help for me. Uh, then I could just plan to do this at a particular time. And we could maybe have a conversation um, and... Uh, you could jot down some notes. So uh, um, that's it for tonight, except I'd like to end with a prayer. Lord, you are always speaking, and um, while well, I can't get over that phrase in John 10, you call your sheep by name. You don't just call them all. Hey, follow me. You call each one individually by name. You're calling, Lord, to each person that hears this now or is going to click on tomorrow. Or, or in a week and listen to this message. Whoever's listening to your word every day, you, you're you speaking to them by, by name. Lord, you know each person here uh, within the sound of my voice whenever they hear it. You know their needs. You know the direction they're going in life and you know the direction you wish them to go. I pray, Lord, that in your word, they would hear your voice in this words from Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, that they would be attentive to your words. Incline your ear to what you say, that they would keep your word within their heart, and that as they do that, as they keep the word, follow the word, that they would find the life, the abundant life, that you promise in John 10.10, 10, uh, that you, have, you give us life and life abundantly, that they would discover that step by step. Thank you, Lord, for my conversation with Mac and my sharing with him and his sharing with me about our need to get into, back into paying more attention to what you're saying to us as just disciples who are following you and inviting others to join us. Bless each person here this night to hear your voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good to be with you again. Love you all. And uh, I think on Sunday, I'll make some announcement, give this a couple days for people to respond about timing for the coming week. Um, but uh, I will uh, be on again tomorrow evening and look at an opportunity to share. Uh, our assignment for May 1st is Acts 2, the first lesson, verses 42 to 47. So we'll take a little look at Acts 2 tomorrow. Uh, God bless you and have a great night. Bye-bye.